All right, so we had two problems when using block ciphers. Uh, the, one of the questions was how to encrypt uh, plain text which are larger than a single block. And we will answer this question when we talk about mode of operations. But the second question was what we should do when uh, the plain text is not a multiple of the block size. So if your block size is, for instance, 64 bits, what happens when you want to encrypt like 10 bits? As we mentioned already, filling the remaining bits with zero causes a problem because it introduces ambiguity. The person who decrypts the ciphertext and see many zeros at the end cannot be sure if they are coming from the padding or if it is from the original plain text. So to remove the ambiguity about the plain text length that are not divisible by B, which is the block size, a structured set of bits can be concatenated to the end of the plain text. And this operation is called padding. Okay. Inappropriate padding schemes can be dangerous. This is very important. We had many examples in the past where inappropriate padding caused problems. Okay. Sometimes in official papers, but sometimes you can see some uh, blog posts in the internet where the attacker used the uh, inappropriate padding to break the system. So we should come up with an easy uh, pattern to solve this problem. And currently the best padding scheme is just to append the one bit to the end of the message and then append as many zero bits as required. So now that you have a pattern, Person who decrypts the message will look at the end and remove every zeros until they see a single one and they will also remove it. And this way they will remove the padding. So here's an example for a block size of 32 bits. For instance, this is the hexadecimal value you want to encrypt, okay? So it is three bytes. So the last byte is missing. So after the padding, you just add a single one and seven zeros to fill the single byte. So in hexadecimal, this corresponds to 80. So this way you fill the remaining parts. And the person who decrypts this uh, block and obtains this value will remove every zero at the end until they see a single one and they will also remove it. So they will obtain the plain text. So we remove the ambiguity by uh, appending a single one bit before the zeros, okay? So you can actually uh, choose a different pattern as long as you know what it is, and the person who is going to decrypt knows that is what it is, then it works. But of course, choosing a something, choosing something simple is always a good idea. But now another question arises: if I'm going to use padding, okay, and for some reason I want to uh, send a message uh, that is a multiple of the block size. So this is my plain text block. So what am I going to do now? Because in this scenario, I use the padding. And in this scenario, if I don't use any padding, then the person who decrypts and obtains this value again will think if this comes, if this is from the padding or not. So if you choose to use padding, you will use always padding. So even if this is a multiple of the block size, you have to perform padding but there is no place to add it. So you generate a second block filled with one and zeros. Okay, so you cause the message expansion. So originally your message was to encrypt a single block. Now you are going to encrypt two blocks. So the person who decrypts and obtains these two blocks, remove the padding and obtains this one. So when we are uh, communicating with huge amounts of data, uh, having a message expansion is not that much of a problem, right? Because, for instance, if you are going to send 1,000 blocks, encrypting and sending 1,001 blocks actually doesn't cause sig uh, significant performance loss or bandwidth, right? So, in general, this is not a problem. But if you are always sending many uh, small amount of blocks, like one or two blocks, then this message expansion might be a problem for you. And also we will talk about it uh, in mode of operations. For instance, if you are going to perform a file encryption or disk encryption, having a message expansion is not good for you because uh, for instance, 
a size of the size of the uh, of a disk is fixed, right? For instance, if it is one terabyte hard drive, then it is one terabyte. So if you fill whole hard drive and then encrypt files and it has message expansion, then you don't have an extra place to write these blocks, right? So in full disk encryptions or uh, generally in file encryption, we choose a mode of operation where you where this kind of padding is not applied, so you don't cause message expansion. Okay. So if message expansion will be a problem for you, then you should choose a mode of operation where you don't need it. Okay. For instance, in some scenarios in internet communication or so on, sometimes the depending on the protocol. The message size is already uh, written in front of the packet in terms of bits, right? So in that scenario, you don't have to use padding anyway. Or even if you do, you will understand the original message. So it depends on the scenario, okay? So you have to be careful. So the padding is not just a problem in modern ciphers. It was a problem in classical ciphers too, because uh, in the past, people were sending letters but even if you encrypt them, you generally can guess what is the beginning and the end of a message is, right? So beginning and ending of official messages are predictable, like my dear ambassador, or it ends with your sincerely yours or faithfully yours and so on and so forth. So you can capture some part of the plain text and you, we assume that you already have the cipher text. So this might help you to break the cipher, right? Because you have a some part of the plain text and the full cipher text. So in order to prevent this, what people did was, so does an attacker with the cipher text can get some parts of the plain text. So to avoid this problem, random words or letters can be added to the beginning and at the end. This is actually what people did, okay? So once you have a plain text as a letter, you just add redundant sentences to the beginning and at the end. Then encrypt it like that and send it. For instance, if it is a telegram, the uh, soldier at the in front of the telegram decrypts the message and looks for this uh, uh, unnecessary sentences and removes them. So the person who is re reading the letter generally don't see this padding. But again, we mentioned that inappropriate padding might be a problem and we will see a historical example in a minute. So these extra words and letters are removed after decoding. So again, this is in military, this is done by the soldier who is uh, staying at the in front of the telegram, right? So uh, there's a very famous historical example. I call it the world of the world wonders. So this happened during the Second World War. So during Second World War, Admiral Chester Nimitz sends the message, various, repeat, various task force 34 to Admiral William Halsey. So one Admiral is asking actually the position of the other ship, okay? So it is as simple as that. But the radio office thought that the padding at the end actually belonged to the message and he decrypted as various, repeat, various task force 34, the world wonders, okay? So, you know, they this the world wonders sentence was a padding, but the person who decrypted the message couldn't be sure if it is from the padding or not. Okay, so he actually left it here as if it is from the plain text. But now the admiral who reads this message thinks that this is a harsh and sarcastic rebuke. So uh, it, since this, he thought that this is a sarcastic rebuke, as a consequence, Halsey dropped his pursuit of a Japanese carrier task force in a futile attempt to aid United States force in the Battle of Samoa. So they thought that this message was asking, uh, you know, other admiral to come to help. So instead of, you know, destroying Japanese carrier task force, this ship went back to other admiral and the other admiral, uh, you know, Chester Nimitz was surprised and saying that I was just interested in the position. I didn't ask you to come here, okay? So this kind of a small mistake, you know, can affect the uh, course of history. So this happened in Battle of Samar between, you know, United States and, Japan in Second World War. So uh, let's uh, conclude this discussion of padding by introducing a different technique where you don't have to cause a message expansion, okay? 
and this is called ciphertext stealing. And the name is sometimes misleading. People think that this is related to the cryptanalysis or something, but it is not okay. This is a very simple technique where you don't want to, you know, uh, increase the size of your message. A general method that allows encrypting messages that are not a multiple of B is called ciphertext stealing. It uses the last two message blocks, hence does not work on shorter messages. This is important. So you cannot use ciphertext stealing on a single block, okay? You have to have at least two blocks. So because you are going to use it on the last two blocks. It does not use padding. This is the good thing. So it does not cause message expansion. So let me try to explain it with a picture. Assume that we are using ECB mode of operation so that it is easier to you know, draw the picture. So recall that in the ECB mode, we simply encrypt the plain text blocks independently. So in our scenario, let's assume that these are two last two blocks and our last block is not a multiple of the block size. So there are empty places here. So again, if you want to use padding, you could simply use one and zeros and then independently encrypt them. But this will cause uh, the increase in the uh, plain text size because uh, since you are going to fill this part, your cipher text size will be larger than your plain text size. But also it might cause message expansion if it is a multiple of the plain text uh, block size. So in the cipher text stealing mode, it works like this. So you focus on the last two blocks and you encrypt uh, this one and obtain the ciphertext, okay? But at this point, you do, do not stop and look at the uh, number of bits in this part, okay? This part is called tail. So you take this part here, then depending on the size of these blocks, you take this part, which is now encrypted and put it here. Okay, and take this part and put it here. And you encrypt this part again because PN hasn't encrypted yet. So you obtain this one. So now everything's a, are encrypted, but tail is encrypted twice. First from here, then here, which is not a problem. But uh, by switching the last two uh, encrypted blocks, now your plain text size and the cipher text size are identical. Okay, because we didn't cause any message expansion. So the person who wants to decrypt this one knows that they are using ciphertext stealing mode. So what they do is as follows. They just look at this size of this remaining part. So they know what is the size of the tail. So they take that part and, you know, decrypt this whole thing and consider that part as the tail, put it here. Put this one here, take this one here, decrypt again, and obtain the plain text. So this way, you don't cause any message expansion, and you don't need to use padding. So this is actually a very simple thing, but uh, it turned out that only a few people knows in the crypto community. I was surprised that nobody was aware of this, but it is a very simple technique. And when you uh, work on a use case where the plain text size should be identical to cipher text size and you don't want message expansion or padding this is the thing you can do so it works on the last two blocks again if you want to encrypt a single block you cannot use this technique but again it works nice when you perform full disk encryption 